Bad Breath, Wikipedia Article Audio Bad Breath, also known as halitosis, is a symptom in which a noticeably unpleasant odor is present on the breath. It can result in anxiety among those affected. It is also associated with depression and symptoms of obsessive-compulsive disorder. Concerns of bad breath may be divided into genuine and non-genuine cases. Of those who have genuine bad breath, about 85% of cases come from inside the mouth. The remaining cases are believed to be due to disorders in the nose, sinuses, throat, lungs, esophagus, or stomach. Rarely, bad breath can be due to an underlying medical condition such as liver failure or ketoacidosis. Non-genuine cases occur when someone feels they have bad breath but someone else cannot detect it. This is estimated to make up between 5% and 72% of cases. Signs and Symptoms Differential Diagnosis the treatment depends on the underlying cause. Initial efforts may include tongue cleaning, mouthwash, and flossing. Tentative evidence supports the use of mouthwash containing chlorhexidine or cetylpyridinium chloride. While there is tentative benefit from the use of a tongue cleaner it is insufficient to draw clear conclusions. Treating underlying disease such as gum disease, tooth decay, or gastroesophageal reflux disease may help. Counseling may be useful in those who falsely believe that they have bad breath. Estimated rates of bad breath vary from 6% to 50% of the population. Concern about bad breath is the third most common reason people seek dental care, after tooth decay and gum disease. It is believed to become more common as people age. Bad breath is viewed as a social taboo and those affected may be stigmatized. People in the United States spend more than $1 billion per year on mouthwash to treat the condition. Bad breath is when a noticeably unpleasant odor is believed to be present on the breath. It can result in anxiety among those affected. It is also associated with depression and symptoms of obsessive-compulsive disorder. In about 90% of genuine halitosis cases, the origin of the odor is in the mouth itself. This is known as intraoral halitosis, oral malodor, or oral halitosis. The most common causes are odor-producing biofilm on the back of the tongue, below the gum line and in the pockets created by gum disease between teeth and the gums. This biofilm results in the production of high levels of foul odors. The odors are produced mainly due to the breakdown of proteins into individual amino acids, followed by the further breakdown of certain amino acids to produce detectable foul gases. Volatile sulfur compounds are associated with oral malodor levels, and usually decrease following successful treatment. Other parts of the mouth may also contribute to the overall odor, but are not as common as the back of the tongue. These locations are, in order of descending prevalence, interdental and subgingival niches, faulty dental work, food impaction areas in between the teeth, abscesses and unclean dentures. Oral-based lesions caused by viral infections like herpes simplex and HPV may also contribute to bad breath. Mouth The intensity of bad breath may differ during the day, due to eating certain foods, smoking, and alcohol consumption. Since the mouth is exposed to less oxygen and is inactive during the night, the odor is usually worse upon awakening. Bad breath may be transient, often disappearing following eating, drinking, tooth brushing, flossing, or rinsing with specialized mouthwash. Bad breath may also be persistent, which affects some 25% of the population in varying degrees. 
The most common location for mouth-related halitosis is the tongue. Tongue bacteria produce malodorous compounds and fatty acids, and account for 80-90% to 90 of all cases of mouth-related bad breath. Large quantities of naturally occurring bacteria are often found on the posterior dorsum of the tongue, where they are relatively undisturbed by normal activity. This part of the tongue is relatively dry and poorly cleansed, and the convoluted microbial structure of the tongue dorsum provides an ideal habitat for anaerobic bacteria, which flourish under a continually forming tongue coating of food debris, dead epithelial cells, post-nasal drip, and overlying bacteria, living and dead. When left on the tongue, the anaerobic respiration of such bacteria can yield either the putrescent smell of indole, scatol, polyamines, or the rotten egg smell of volatile sulfur compounds such as hydrogen sulfide, methylmercaptan, allyl methyl sulfide, and dimethyl sulfide. The presence of halitosis producing bacteria on the back of the tongue is not to be confused with tongue coating. Bacteria are invisible to the naked eye, and degrees of white tongue coating are present in most people with and without halitosis. A visible white tongue coating does not always equal the back of the tongue as an origin of halitosis, however a white tongue is thought to be a sign of halitosis. In oral medicine generally, a white tongue is considered a sign of several medical conditions. Patients with periodontal disease were shown to have six-fold prevalence of tongue coating compared with normal subjects. Halitosis patients were also shown to have significantly higher bacterial loads in this region compared to individuals without halitosis. Tongue Gingival crevices are the small grooves between teeth and gums, and they are present in health although they may become inflamed when gingivitis is present. The difference between a gingival crevice and periodontal pocket is that former is 3 mm. Periodontal pockets usually accompany periodontal disease. There is some controversy over the role of periodontal diseases in causing bad breath. However, Advanced periodontal disease is a common cause of severe halitosis. Waste products from the anaerobic bacteria growing below the gum line have a foul smell and have been clinically demonstrated to produce a very intense bad breath. Removal of the subgingival calculus and friable tissue has been shown to improve mouth odor considerably. This is accomplished by subgingival scaling and root planing and irrigation with an antibiotic mouth rinse. The bacteria that cause gingivitis and periodontal disease are invariably gram-negative and capable of producing VSC. Methylmercaptan is known to be the greatest contributing VSC in halitosis that is caused by periodontal disease and gingivitis. The level of VSC on breath has been shown to positively correlate with the depth of periodontal pocketing, the number of pockets, and whether the pockets bleed when examined with a dental probe. Indeed, VSC may themselves have been shown to contribute to the inflammation and tissue damage that is characteristic of periodontal disease. However, not all patients with periodontal disease have halitosis and not all patients with halitosis have periodontal disease. Although patients with periodontal disease are more likely to suffer from halitosis than the general population, the halitosis symptom was shown to be more strongly associated with degree of tongue coating than with the severity of periodontal disease. Another possible symptom of periodontal disease is a bad taste which does not necessarily accompany a malodor that is detectable by others. Other less common reported causes from within the mouth include In this occurrence, the air exiting the nostrils has a pungent odor that differs from the oral odor. Nasal odor may be due to sinus infections or foreign bodies. Gums 
Halitosis is often stated to be a symptom of chronic rhinosiasitis, however gold standard breath analysis techniques have not been applied. Theoretically, there are several possible mechanisms of both objective and subjective halitosis that may be involved. Other Causes There is disagreement as to the proportion of halitosis cases which are caused by conditions of the tonsils. Some claim that the tonsils are the most significant cause of halitosis after the mouth. According to one report, approximately 3% of halitosis cases were related to the tonsils. Conditions of the tonsils which may be associated with halitosis include chronic caseous tonsillitis, tonsillolithiasis, and less commonly peritonsillar abscess, actinomycosis, fungating malignancies, chondroid choristoma and inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor. Nose and Sinuses The lower esophageal sphincter which is the valve between the stomach and the esophagus, may not close properly due to a hiatal hernia or GERD, allowing acid to enter the esophagus and gases to escape to the mouth. A zincurs diverticulum may also result in halitosis due to aging food retained in the esophagus. The stomach is considered by most researchers as a very uncommon source of bad breath. The esophagus is a closed and collapsed tube, and continuous flow of gas or putrid substances from the stomach indicates a health problem such as reflux serious enough to be bringing up stomach contents or a fistula between the stomach and the esophagus which will demonstrate more serious manifestations than just foul odor. Tonsils In the case of allyl methyl sulfide, Odor does not come from the stomach, since it does not get metabolized there. There are a few systemic medical conditions that may cause foul breath odor, but these are infrequent in the general population. Such conditions are Individuals afflicted by the above conditions often show additional, more diagnostically conclusive symptoms than bad breath alone. One quarter of the people seeking professional advice on bad breath have an exaggerated concern of having bad breath, known as halitophobia, delusional halitosis, or as a manifestation of olfactory reference syndrome. They are sure that they have bad breath, although many have not asked anyone for an objective opinion. Bad breath may severely affect the lives of some 0.51.0% of the adult population. Scientists have long thought that smelling one's own breath odor is often difficult due to acclimatization, although many people with bad breath are able to detect it in others. Research has suggested that self-evaluation of halitosis is not easy because of preconceived notions of how bad we think it should be. Some people assume that they have bad breath because of bad taste, however bad taste is considered a poor indicator. Esophagus Patients often self-diagnose by asking a close friend. Stomach one popular home method to determine the presence of bad breath is to lick the back of the wrist, let the saliva dry for a minute or two, and smell the result. This test results in overestimation, as concluded from research, and should be avoided. A better way would be to lightly scrape the posterior back of the tongue with a plastic disposable spoon and to smell the drying residue. Home tests that use a chemical reaction to test for the presence of polyamines and sulfur compounds on tongue swabs are now available, but there are few studies showing how well they actually detect the odor. Furthermore, since breath odor changes in intensity throughout the day depending on many factors, multiple testing sessions may be necessary. Deep carious lesions which cause localized food impaction and stagnation, recent dental extraction sockets fill with blood clot, 
and provide an ideal habitat for bacterial proliferation, interdental food packing, this can be caused by missing teeth, tilted, spaced or crowded teeth, or poorly contoured approximal dental fillings. Food debris becomes trapped, undergoes slow bacterial putrefaction and release of malodorous volatiles. Food packing can also cause a localized periodontal reaction, characterized by dental pain that is relieved by cleaning the area of food packing with interdental brush or floss, acrylic dentures inadequate denture hygiene practices such as failing to clean and remove the prosthesis each night, may cause a malodor from the plastic itself or from the mouth as microbiota responds to the altered environment. The plastic is actually porous, and the fitting surface is usually irregular, sculpted to fit the edentulous oral anatomy. These factors predispose to bacterial and yeast retention, which is accompanied by a typical smell, oral infections, oral ulceration, fasting, stress-anxiety, menstrual cycle at mid-cycle and during menstruation. Increased breath VSC were reported in women, smoking Smoking is linked with periodontal disease, which is the second most common cause of oral malodor. Smoking also has many other negative effects on the mouth, from increased rates of dental decay to premalignant lesions and even oral cancer, alcohol, volatile foods e.g. onion, garlic, durian, cabbage, cauliflower, and radish. Volatile foodstuffs may leave malodorous residues in the mouth, which are the subject to bacterial putrefaction and VSC release. However, volatile foodstuffs may also cause halitosis via the blood-borne halitosis mechanism. Medication often medications can cause xerostomia which results in increased microbial growth in the mouth. If bad breath is persistent, and all other medical and dental factors have been ruled out, specialized testing and treatment is required. Hundreds of dental offices and commercial breath clinics now claim to diagnose and treat bad breath. They often use some of several laboratory methods for diagnosis of bad breath. Although such instrumentation and examinations are widely used in breath clinics, the most important measurement of bad breath is the actual sniffing and scoring of the level and type of the odor carried out by trained experts. The level of odor is usually assessed on a six-point intensity scale. Holymeter, a portable sulfide monitor used to test for levels of sulfur emissions in the mouth air. When used properly, this device can be very effective at determining levels of certain VSC-producing bacteria. However, it has drawbacks in clinical applications. For example, other common sulfides are not recorded as easily and can be misrepresented in test results. Certain foods such as garlic and onions produce sulfur in the breath for as long as 48 hours and can result in false readings. The holymeter is also very sensitive to alcohol, so one should avoid drinking alcohol or using alcohol-containing mouthwashes for at least 12 hours prior to being tested. This analog machine loses sensitivity over time and requires periodic recalibration to remain accurate, gas chromatography, portable machines, such as the oral chroma, are currently being introduced. This technology is specifically designed to digitally measure molecular levels of the three major VSCs in a sample of mouth air. It is accurate in measuring the sulfur components of the breath and produces visual results in graph form via computer interface, Bona test. This test is directed to find the salivary levels of an enzyme indicating the presence of certain halitosis-related bacteria. Beta-galactosidase test, salivary levels of this enzyme were found to be correlated with oral malodor. Two main classification schemes exist for bad breath, although neither are universally accepted. 
systemic diseases delusional halitosis diagnosis self-diagnosis the Miyazaki ETAL classification was originally described in 1999 in a Japanese scientific publication, and has since been adapted to reflect North American society, especially with regards halitophobia. The classification assumes three primary divisions of the halitosis symptom, namely genuine halitosis, pseudohalitosis, and halitophobia. This classification has been suggested to be most widely used, but it has been criticized because it is overly simplistic and is largely of use only to dentists rather than other specialties. Genuine halitosis, A. Physiologic halitosis, B. Pathologic halitosis, oral, extraoral. The Tangerman and Winkle classification was suggested in Europe in 2002. This classification focuses only on those cases where there is genuine halitosis, and has therefore been criticized for being less clinically useful for dentistry when compared to the Miyazaki ETAL classification. The same authors also suggested that halitosis can be divided according to the character of the odor into three groups. Based on the strengths and weaknesses of previous attempts at classification, a cause-based classification has been proposed. Intraoral halitosis, extraoral halitosis, A. Bloodborne halitosis, systemic diseases metabolic diseases, food, medication. Any halitosis symptom is potentially the sum of these types in any combination, superimposed on the physiologic odor present in all healthy individuals. Efforts may include physical or chemical means to decrease the numbers of bacteria, products to mask the smell, or chemicals to alter the odor-creating molecules. It is recommended that in those who use tobacco products stop. Evidence does not support the benefit of dietary changes or chewing gum. Brushing the teeth may help. While there is tentative benefit from tongue cleaning it is insufficient to draw clear conclusions. A 2006 Cochrane review found tentative evidence that it might decrease levels of odor molecules. Flossing may be useful. Testing A 2008 systematic review found that antibacterial mouth rinses may help. Mouthwashes often contain antibacterial agents including acetylpyridinium chloride, chlorhexidine, zinc gluconate, essential oils, hydrogen peroxide, and chlorine dioxide. Acetylpyridinium chloride and chlorhexidine can temporarily stain teeth. If gum disease and cavities are present, it is recommended that these be treated. If diseases outside of the mouth are believed to be contributing to the problem, treatment may result in improvements. Classification Management Mechanical measures Counseling may be useful in those who falsely believe that they have bad breath. It is difficult for researchers to make estimates of the prevalence of halitosis in the general population for several reasons. Firstly, halitosis is subject to societal taboo and stigma, which may impact individuals' willingness to take part in such studies or to report accurately their experience of the condition. Secondly, there is no universal agreement about what diagnostic criteria and what detection methods should be used to define which individuals have halitosis and which do not. Some studies rely on self-reported estimation of halitosis, and there is contention as to whether this is a reliable predictor of actual halitosis or not. In reflection of these problems, Reported epidemiological data are widely variable.
The earliest known mention of bad breath occurs in ancient Egypt, where detailed recipes for toothpaste are made before the pyramids are built. The 1550 BC Ebers Papyrus describes tablets to cure bad breath based on incense, cinnamon, myrrh, and honey. Hippocratic medicine advocated a mouthwash of red wine and spices to cure bad breath. Note that alcohol-containing mouthwashes are now thought to exacerbate bad breath as they dry the mouth, leading to increased microbial growth. The Hippocratic Corpus also describes a recipe based on marble powder for female bad breath sufferers. The ancient Roman physician Pliny wrote about methods to sweeten the breath. Ancient Chinese emperors required visitors to chew clove before an audience. The Talmud describes bad breath as a disability, which could be grounds for legal breaking of a marriage license. Early Islamic theology stressed that the teeth and tongue should be cleaned with a siwak, a stick from the plant Salvadora persica tree. This traditional chewing stick is also called a miswak, especially used in Saudi Arabia, and essentially is like a natural toothbrush made from twigs. During the Renaissance era, Laurent Joubert, doctor to King Henry III of France states bad breath is caused by dangerous miasma that falls into the lungs and through the heart, causing severe damages. In B. G. Jefferies and J. L. Nichols' Search Lights on Health, the following recipe is offered, teaspoonful of the following mixture after each meal, 1 ounce chloride of soda, 1 ounce liquor of potassa, 1 and 1 half ounces phosphate of soda, and 3 ounces of water. Mouthwashes In the present day, bad breath is one of the biggest social taboos. The general population places great importance on the avoidance of bad breath, illustrated by the annual $1 billion that consumers in the United States spend on deodorant-type mouth rinses, mints, and related over-the-counter products. Many of these practices are merely short-term attempts at masking the odor. Some authors have suggested that there is an evolutionary basis to concern over bad breath. An instinctive aversion to unpleasant odors may function to detect spoiled food sources and other potentially invective or harmful substances. Body odors in general are thought to play an important role in mate selection in humans, an unpleasant odor may signal disease, and hence a potentially unwise choice of mate. Although reports of bad breath are found in the earliest medical writings known, the social stigma has likely changed over time, possibly partly due to socio-cultural factors involving advertising pressures. As a result, the negative psychosocial aspects of halitosis may have worsened, and psychiatric conditions such as halitophobia are probably more common than historically. There have been rare reports of people committing suicide because of halitosis whether there is genuine halitosis or not. The word halitosis is derived from the Latin word halitus, meaning breath, and the Greek suffix osis meaning diseased or a condition of. With modern consumerism, there has been a complex interplay of advertising pressures and the existing evolutionary aversion to malodor. Contrary to the popular belief that Listerine coined the term halitosis, its origins date to before the product's existence, being coined by physician Joseph William Howe in his 1874 book The Breath, and the diseases which give it a fetid odor, although it only became commonly used in the 1920s when a marketing campaign promoted Listerine as a solution for chronic halitosis. The company was the first to manufacture mouthwashes in the United States. According to Freakonomics, Listerine, was invented in the 19th century as powerful surgical antiseptic. It was later sold, in distilled form, as both a floor cleaner and a cure for gonorrhea. 
but it wasn't a runaway success until the 1920s, when it was pitched as a solution for chronic halitosis a then obscure medical term for bad breath. Listerine's new ads featured forlorn young women and men, eager for marriage but turned off by their mate's rotten breath. Can I be happy with him in spite of that? One maiden asked herself. Until that time, bad breath was not conventionally considered such a catastrophe, but Listerine changed that. As the advertising scholar James B. Twitchell writes, Listerine did not make mouthwash as much as it made halitosis. In just seven years, the company's revenues rose from $115,000 to more than $8 million. According to traditional Ayurvedic medicine, chewing arica nut and betel leaf is a remedy for bad breath. In South Asia, it was a custom to chew arica or betel nut and betel leaf among lovers because of the breath-freshening and stimulant drug properties of the mixture. Both the nut and the leaf are mild stimulants and can be addictive with repeated use. The betel nut will also cause dental decay and red or black staining of teeth when chewed. Both arica nut and betel leaf chewing, however, can cause premalignant lesions such as leukoplakia and submucous fibrosis, and are recognized risk factors for oral and oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. Other traditional remedies for halitosis include guava leaves in Thailand, eggshells in China, parsley in Italy, and urine-based mouth rinse in certain European cultures. Practitioners and purveyors of alternative medicine sell a vast range of products that claim to be beneficial in treating halitosis, including dietary supplements, vitamins, and oral probiotics. Halitosis is often claimed to be a symptom of candida hypersensitivity syndrome or related diseases, and is claimed to be treatable with antifungal medications or alternative medications to treat fungal infections. In 1996, the International Society for Breath Odor Research was formed to promote multidisciplinary research on all aspects of breath odors. The 8th International Conference on Breath Odor took place in 2009 in Dortmund, Germany, while the 9th was held in 2011 in Salvador de Bahia, Brazil. Underlying Disease Epidemiology History, Society, and Culture Etymology Alternative Medicine Research Sulfurous or fecal caused by volatile sulfur compounds, most notably methylmercaptan, hydrogen sulfide, and dimethyl sulfide, fruity caused by acetone, present in diabetes, urine-like or ammoniacal caused by ammonia, dimethylamine, and trimethylamine, present in trimethylaminuria and uremia. Type 0 Type 1, Type 2, Type 3, Type 4, Type 5, 